and this is also one of the tougher fights. For the simple reason that this boss has a very, very annoying habit. Because it's so large and the arena and the fighting at the you know the area you're fighting is so small, it is a very, very annoying habit of backing you into walls and just destroying your ass. And this is a see, right there. That that bullshit. What the hell am I supposed to do? Sometimes you can't even get out of it. And that's just that's just annoying as hell to me. What that, and that is one of the problems of this game. I won't, I'm not going to say this game is perfect by any means. And and that's one of the problems. The, the, the uh, regular monsters, especially large bosses like this, have a bad habit of doing that. And there's really no way to get out of it. There's either two, two things that are going to happen. A, the boss backs down and you manage to escape. Or B, you die. One of the two. And it just, it's just infuriating. And as for fighting, well, you can actually dodge some attacks, which is why the battle system is a crap load better than the way FF12 is set up. Because, like I said before, it's similar to FF12, only you can dodge attack, making it a lot more fun. If I'm going to be able to move, I should be able to dodge, in my opinion. Of course, some of the attacks are hard, hard as hell to dodge, especially that laser, it turns out to be a pain in the ass. And, you know, but you can get past it. These are all minor problems I'm talking about, so it's really not too big a deal. But like I said about, you know, fighting on small arenas and getting backed into walls and stuff, this is one of the fights against Eve, one of the many fights against Eve. And you're fighting on a a horse-drawn carriage. There's literally no way for you to move effectively, and being that, being that, there's no way to dodge any attacks, so you end up healing a lot in this fight. You know, it's just hard as hell. But moving on from that, there's a lot of different characters. Daniel, for example. Daniel, <laughs> Daniel will pwn you. Yeah, he does that. Daniel's cool. He's uh, one of the, he's pretty much the main supporting character throughout the entire game. You also meet another character named Doctor Clamp, who's more of a villain. He's one of the main villains besides Eve. Uh, at first, because he, you know, he seems suspicious at first, and you know, later in the game, you just know you just know as soon as you meet him, he's going to be a problem. Uh. But he tells you basically what he th what what's going on. It g well, it gives you a general idea of what's going on. He talks about the mitochondria. The mitochondria is what caused Eve. The mitochondria is there is 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 the entire issue throughout the entire game of Parasite Eve. The mitochondria are intelligent, and basically in Eve's case, they've mutated to a point where they've taken over the physical body, Melissa, and now they're trying to con get the other mitochondria throughout all the other organisms to you know, turn into into their mutated form and basically spawn. It's an extremely complex explanation. And really, in order to get a, gen a good idea of what they're talking about, but essentially the mitochondria are betraying us in this game. And that's a pretty creepy idea. I mean, that really is. There's also another character called Dr... I think you pronounce it Maida, but I could be wrong. But he's, he's, a, he's a scientist from Japan. And this leads up to, to actually the game is actually based off a Japanese horror film, which I've seen is not really that scary. It's just, it's actually more heart-wrenching than anything. But, uh, yeah, it's basically the same thing happened in Japan, only not to this certain degree. And he's come over here to try to help because he was involved in the, uh, the, one, the incident in Japan. So, yeah, just a bit of a fun fact there. The game is based off a movie. Also... Much like an RPG, there's an extensive uh, uh, way to customize your equipment and weapons. There's upgrades, and uh, there's ways to... Uh, there's items you get, which are very specific, known as tools. That's all they're called. The Incredible Item Tool, which actually lets you customize your different equipment. And it's an extremely uh, interesting idea, and it does work ex extremely well. I quite like the uh, tool function. It, you know, it, it lets you customize your own character. It's a bit too complex, in my opinion, but not so much that, you know, it's a pain. Also, one of the issues I have with the game, there is one more big issue. It's probably the biggest issue I had, because all the other issues were very minor. This is one of the things that drove me insane. Not that it's really a problem with the gameplay, but the game mocks you. You go to a gun shop, and Daniel says, Go ahead, pick out every, anything you want, pretty much. Well, I want this assault rifle on the wall. Can I have this assault rifle on the wall? No! The answer is no! Can I have this shotgun here? No. So basically, the game says, 
we could give you these weapons, but we're not going to. And the, I mean, it would it would be one thing if Daniel didn't tell you just pick out whatever you want. But I can't pick out whatever I want. If if he didn't say that, it wouldn't really be a problem. But what the hell? Come on! I mean, this this part of the game. I mean, all you get out of this is some ammunition, which is good. A tool. <laughs> a range upgrade and a pistol that's it no shotgun no assault rifle there's even a missile launcher here nothing the game is basically mocking you in this part and and i guess looking past it it's okay but come on why do you have to mock me game why must you do that that, that that's just mean i'm sorry that really is and you also go to a pharmacy, which essentially does the same thing, where you say, oh, get whatever you want, and you don't get to get whatever you want. Of course, I can forgive the pharmacy, because I really don't think cough drops or a hairspray is going to assist me against the mitochondria t taking over my body. So, in this, and I can for I can forgive the ph pharmacy, but I mean, with the gun shop, why the fuck couldn't I just pick out what I wanted, damn it? Ugh. In general, I love this game, though. Sure, it's got some problems, but no game is perfect in my opinion. And actually, I had a lot of trouble finding problems with the game to complain about. I, I really couldn't find much wrong. Now, one thing I, I'm, I will say, this probably isn't a game for casual gamers. Because it requires a lot of running around, a lot of tedious work, and a lot of finding out what the fuck to do. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, that's, yeah. <laughs> so I don't think casual gamers are going to have a lot of fun with the game. And in that aspect, I can understand. But I think hardcore and underground gamers like myself will thoroughly enjoy the game. And I strongly recommend, it, you know, finding a copy and at least giving it a try. Because it's one of those lost games. I mean, you hear about all about Resident Evil, Silent Hill, the greatest survival horror games ever. But I love Parasite Eve. And, you know, I like the main character, Aya. She's one of the few female ca video game characters that does not need big boobs in order to be cool. No offense to Laura Croft fans out there, but Laura Croft is half fan service. <laughs> but yeah, hope you enjoyed the review, guys. See you later.